Good morning, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining me. Um, I am going to be answering a simple question today that I have been finding a lot on my uh, Facebook forums where people are looking to uh, jump into this <laughs> uh, acrylic pouring and they don't uh, have the basics that they need. And they're, and they're at the question is, is, you know, I'm new to this. How do I get started? Well, that's a very easy question. Um, or not, not easy, let me say that. It's a very common question and very uh, easy for me to answer because I've been there and we all have that have been out here pouring for a while. Um, so basically to get started you don't need all those um, higher end uh, products that are out there. You don't you don't want to start off using Amsterdam paints or Windsor Newtons. Um, you want to have or you know the, the Liquitex, I mean you can you can but you want to go with a little bit cheaper stuff to begin with when you first start so that you can start understanding the methods, understanding the concept of how to do um, these certain pours. Uh, your Dutch pours, your uh, tree ring pours, um, your dirty pours, your open cup pours, your, um, you know, your, your flip cup pours. All those are uh, going to help you get started, but you need to have the ability to practice and you don't want to practice with your higher end paints and, and higher end products. So when I got started, what I started using is I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up these canvases. Now you can get canvases anywhere. You can get them at the dollar store or the Walmart or Lowe's, um, uh, things like that. You can get um, canvases depending on the price, you just check it out. It's Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any, any kind of art store that you have. Um, these are $13 for 10. Uh, you can't beat that as far as the price is. Now, as far as mixing your paints, you don't have to have all those other pouring meetings. You don't have to have your Liquitex pouring meeting, your GAC 800, you know, all the uh, those higher end uh, pouring meetings. You don't need any of that. You can literally mix your paint with just paint and water. Now, I don't recommend it because most of these acrylics are water-based and they will um, break down with too much water added, so you've got to be careful. Uh, but you can do uh, acrylic pouring with just water. Now, you can add um, glue all because when you add water to the, to the paint, it, it, it kind of breaks down some of those binders that are in the paint naturally that naturally occur in the, in the paint when you buy it. So you add Elmer's glue wall, which is a PVA glue that will help to add the binders back to the paint to help it, you know, stick to the canvas, help it stick to uh, itself and make sure it doesn't crack. Um, some people will use Flood Floatrol as a pouring medium. Now this does not have binders in it. What this does is it literally uh, it's like a self-leveling, almost like when you pour a self-leveling concrete floor, it just wants to flow out and be as even as possible. Um, and that's what this stuff does. This is, helps your paint to level out so that, that it's not wavy on your canvas. This bottle right here, this is a gallon jug. Now granted this is in the United States, but this gallon jug right here is about $15. This is going to last you a long time when you're painting on small canvases like this. I generally prefer 16 by 20s and one of these jugs lasts me probably about 10, 20, uh, 10 to 15 paintings and I mix my uh, pouring medium or I, excuse me, I mix my uh, my paints with a flood flow troll, two parts flood flow troll to one part paint. Sometimes three parts flood flow troll to one part paint. Depending. And then I add water um, and always use bottled water or purified water, things like that. Because if you use tap water, you can get whatever contaminants that are in the pipes, um, whatever contaminants that uh, uh, the, the calcium or the uh, minerals and everything is going to get into your paint and it could actually change the composition of your paint. So try to always use bottled or filtered water. But Add your water to consistency, and I have another video that will explain that. Okay? Now, um, <clears throat> here's another one. This one is from Master Touch. I got these at Hobby Lobby. And these, as you can see, are uh, pre-mixed 
pouring acrylic. Okay, um, this is pre-mixed with uh, the pouring medium and the paint. That does not mean that this is ready to pour. In my opinion, you can use it, but it is a little too thick. I like to take this and add a little bit of water to it. Okay. Now, after you have mixed your paint and everything, you'll need one of these guys. It's a simple strainer, a uh, little, little tiny strainer here. And the reason being is because sometimes, if you look right there in the lid, what do you see? Dried paint. Sometimes that will fall into your paint when you're pouring it into your cup to mix it. And also, this stuff tends to dry inside the container and give you what we call flow trial boogers. It's like a little snot and it's just, it's not not cohesive with, with the painting. So we just try to strain every bit of paint before it hits the canvas. Okay, so we got canvases, we got flood flow trial glue oil. You don't necessarily need the flood flow trial uh, or the glue oil. Like I said, you can, you can get by with just water, but I would recommend it to get started to help you out. Okay, torch. This in itself is, uh, it's not 100% necessary. You can literally pop the bubbles in your paint because when you pour paint, air bubbles start to rise up through it and you could literally pop them with a, a um, wooden skewer or a needle or the side of your palette knife or something like that, but that's tedious. You could take this torch, light it up, and then wave it across the top of it and that, that torch, the, the heat from it pops the bubbles really quickly. This was the first torch that I got. Um, it was sufficient, it helped, I mean I had to have it really close because as you can see the, the flame is not very long and it's not very powerful. Um, I ended up changing and I went to a bigger one. Now this is for like um, baking and stuff like that and as you can see it has a much bigger flame. I like this one. I hold it at least about that high up off of my canvas and I'm going across like this because that this thing is very powerful. Both are refillable which is good. Okay so you want to make your paintings and you want to have cells and what cells are is when you have these rings that come up through your paint and show different colors from underneath. Uh, you see that in a lot of people's paintings on YouTube and, and uh, on Facebook and things. Um, to get started with doing that, we have 100% silicone oil. You can pick this up um, in your art stores or you can also find it in um, your sporting goods stores near the treadmills. Treadmill oil is 100% silicone, so you can use the same thing, okay? Um, I bought this at Hobby Lobby. I, the, my Hobby Lobby doesn't sell it anymore, I don't know why. They switched to this, which is cell medium. Um, this also creates cells when you add it to your paint. So when you mix your paint up, um, the silicone oil or the cell medium, when you mix it up, you're gonna put anywhere from three to four drops at each color that you want the cells to come out in. Okay? All right. Now, paint. This is the biggest thing that, that I came across. And paint is expensive, or can be. But I found in the very beginning a cheaper solution, which is uh, I go to like uh, Meyer or Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And I picked these little containers up. This is Deco Art, and this is from Meyer. That's who sells this. Um, this one is Folk Art, and this is from Walmart. And these are like a dollar a piece. And, and most likely, you're not going to use an entire bottle per painting. So you might get two, maybe three paintings out of each one of these bottles, depending on how much of it you're using. But they have so many colors in these little bottles. And they're like a dollar a piece. Uh, some of them are 79 cents a piece, depending on where you go. Um, they have color shifting, so that the way the light hits it from different angles um, will give you a different look. Metallics, they're always good. Fluorescent colors. 
and just regular colors also. So, yeah, like I said, you can um, definitely do quite a bit of damage to your pocket if you don't be careful when you get to these sections because there's so many colors and it's just like ooh 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 they're only they're only a dollar <laughs> this you know when I first started what I did was I, I wouldn't I would pick out the colors of what I wanted to paint for the next day if I wanted to do some painting okay and those are really cheap and they're they're most of those are are, are very decent um, the only one that I have come across that I've had any issues with um, is from Walmart. It's Apple Barrel White, and for some reason that white always cracks. Okay. Um, here's a couple other examples of Master's Touch. These bigger containers right here, these are $12.99. Okay, these are a little more fluid than your tubes. Um, so you don't you don't need as, uh, or you need more of this than you would of this as far as the ounces that you're using. Um, this is a little bit thicker. When you have thicker bodied paints, you're going to actually use less because the pigment is a little bit stronger. <clears throat> so, these are like $6.99 for this tube right here, and these are like $12.99. Unless you can catch them on sale, sometimes Hobby Lobby does a sale uh, half off and fun stuff. So, here is another example. This is house paint. Okay? I've had it. Um, I've had it tinted for me. These little containers are like $4 for these. You can use that, okay? Plastic cups. These are essential for mixing your paints. Um, you can pour out of these uh, to begin with, okay? Uh, a couple more things. Hair dryer, I mean, that's pretty household standard stuff. Um, your popsicle stir sticks, that's another thing. An apron, I would suggest an apron just to keep your clothes clean. I didn't when I first started and I got to paint all of my clothes. Last thing, get a level. This is very important. You want to make sure that your surface that you're pouring on is level and then also stick it on top of your canvas and make sure that your canvas is level before you start pouring because otherwise the paint just going to slide off to one side and you're going to lose the composition of what is supposed to be in the middle. Okay, well that is how do we get started. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscription button, throw me a like. Thanks for watching. Pour on guys.